Hello again, everyone. This is Chris Sharon at Robert Harding, and this is the Citizen Sports Weekly for August 28, 2014. Boom. Boom. Labor Day weekend edition of the Citizen Sports Weekly. And since it's Labor Day, uh, you know, pennant races are heating up, baseball's a hot topic, and we, we've done a lot of discussing of the NFL and various things like that. And we'll, we'll hold that for next week when we do our special NFL season preview edition of the... Uh, what the heck we call that? Our highest rated show of the year. Yeah, especially when the Dolphins and Bills play. <laughs> so we're going to do some baseball, though. And uh, we're going to talk about two topics, both baseball related. First one is Pete Rose. I uh, don't know if you saw it, but Keith Olbermann on ESPN did a great show. One of his best ever uh, on Pete Rose. His, what's the status with his reinstatement? There was an interview with Commissioner Bud Selig. Uh, there was an interview with Pete Rose. I mean, this thing had everything and it was great and, and wonderful hour of television and, and i'm sure the clips are on espn.com someplace i really uh, on youtube and youtube, youtube too and i encourage you to watch it great stuff so the question is should pete rose be reinstated and i say wholeheartedly yes this guy has paid his his price i mean he's paid a price a very steep price okay uh for what he did and what he did was wrong don't condone it he violated the cardinal rule of baseball or as he called it the red rule because it, you know he's a former red he won't Cardinals and everything. Right? I got you. So I got you. he, uh, I think he's, I think that is, he's paid his, he's paid his, he's done his time. I mean, he's paid the price, and it's time to reinstate him. No, you do not let him manage or coach or have any on-field um, type capacity in Major League Baseball. Plus, the guy's seventy-three years old. Although with his age, I don't think it would matter. He would, I guarantee, he would love to manage in the Major Leagues again. I mean, you know, really or some but some role. I think you, you allow him, really the one thing that he deserves is to be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown. And it's been so long that he's no longer eligible for the writer's ballot. He would go to the Veterans Committee. Mm -hmm. And that would be intriguing because obviously, as we both know, the Veterans Committee are former players, Hall of Famers, and all these guys basically played with Pete. So would they, you know, say, yeah, let's, let's let him in. I don't think it would be a slam dunk. I, I really feel that they would make him wait a year, but he should be back, he should be allowed to go into the Hall of Fame, uh, like I said, he, it took him like 15 years to admit that he bet on baseball, but he did admit it, and you know, the thing about Pete Rose is, is that he's a cocky guy, that's how he got to the majors, that's why he's got more hits than anybody else, he's not going to be able to change his personality, okay, he, he can be brash, he can be kind of off, in a little, you know, just not the nicest guy in the world, you know, but that's who he is. And what he did on the field is the most hits of anybody else in the game, 4,256. 4, Let him go in the hall before he dies. I think that's just the human thing to do. Robert, what's your thoughts? Man, we agree on this. Well, of course we agree What a boring this. show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was hoping you were opposed. No, of course not. I've been writing Pete Rose should be inducted for years. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, it's, it's a position I've had for a long time. Um, you know, I remember in high school actually uh, getting asked this question. I, I said, why not? I mean, you know, yes, what he did was wrong, mm -hmm. and I think everybody can agree with that. But, you know, one, one thing I liked about, you know, what Olbermann was talking about, and I don't know if it was him that brought it up or one of his guests, but, you know, uh, with baseball, with what we know now, you know, with what has transpired since Pete right. Rose, with namely the steroid era, you know, how can you look at what this guy did and, you know, say he deserves this mm -hmm. lifetime punishment right. when you have known cheaters who, yeah, they might get they might get a suspension or whatever, but they don't have a lifetime ban, they're not blocked from the Hall of Fame, you know, all of this stuff. Uh, you know, I I think you've gotta you've gotta bring Pete back, you gotta put him in the Hall of Fame, uh, that's where he belongs and uh, you know, hopefully it happens soon. You know, Bud Selig is kind of He's really danced around when asked this yeah. question, like, you know, basically kind of like, I'll get around. It's under advisement. Yeah, it's under advisement and all this other stuff. Yeah. It's like, well, he's gone. Hopefully, you know, uh, new blood will come in. You know, Bud Selig was kind of connected to that old guard of, right. you know, of baseball. And so hopefully uh, the new commissioner will come in and, you know, bring a new perspective to this because, you know, if anything, I mean, you know, you don't have to let him manage. You don't have to right. let him, you know, back in any sort of yeah. role with any team. But... You know, at least lift the ban and let him get inducted into the Hall of Fame. I think it's the right thing to do. I think the Hall of Fame isn't complete 
without Pete Rose being inducted no. in there. And, you know, the funny thing is, and I, you know, went to the Hall of Fame myself this year mm -hmm. a couple times and, uh, you know, saw the memorabilia there. You know, they have Pete Rose stuff. Yes, they do. So let the man in. Yeah. Give, and, him, give him a plaque. And like Olbermann said at the end of the show, I mean, they – they let Pete back in the game when it suits their purposes. You know, Absolutely. when they have the all-century team. The 90, here's, 90 right, all -star game, yeah. Let's let Pete in, okay? I mean, that's, that's the thing. They're, they're hypocrites. And, you know, but I really think Bud Selig, at the end of his term, is going to reinstate him. That's my hunch. It's just good public rela public relations. It makes it makes Bud look great as he's leaving office. It's a final, yeah, you know, like... Bud doesn't look great without it. That's I for mean, sure. you know, really. I mean, it, it seems petty now. I mean, when you, you know, when you ask the guy straight out, like, what's the, what's the status? Come on, what's changed, really? I mean, what has changed? Pete Rose has done reality shows. He signs autographs in Vegas. Okay, the guy's got to make a buck, okay? I mean, it's not like he's got a college degree in engineering. He makes where, annual trips to Cooperstown, I mean, right? and he, and, Well, because he, he signs. He's, that's the only way he, he has of bringing in income, okay? And, and that's it. But like I said, he, you know, he's, he still goes to the racetracks. He still gambles. And that's who he is. And, and, is, and I, I think that a lot of us know that gambling is an addiction. That is, it is a sickness. It can be, you can be addicted to gambling just like you can drugs, alcohol, nicotine, a whole bunch of different things. And this guy is addicted to gambling. And, you know, it's sad. It is sad that he's like this. So I think the guy deserves, because what he did on the field, to be in the Hall of Fame, reinstate him, let him be inducted in the Hall of Fame, let him enjoy his moment before he dies, and that's it. So, Robert, anything else you want to add about it? No, I don't think we covered we're it. Gonna, we're going to move on to another topic. This is baseball, but this is more upstate New York-centered uh, here. Uh, the Jamestown Jammers of the New York Penn League, uh, the rich family which owns the Jamestown Jammers, has announced this past week that they are moving the franchise to Morgantown, West Virginia. Yeehaw. Wow. I'm not going to insult the people of West Virginia. There's some nice people in West Virginia. Yeah. Okay. And it's a nice state. Very scenic. Okay. Uh, there are already minor league baseball teams in West Virginia. They're not the New York Penn League, though. Morgantown, I, I looked it up on the map. But I wasn't exactly sure what part of West Virginia Morgantown was in. I do know where West Virginia is, by the way, obviously. It's, it's west, west of, of Virginia. Virginia. There we go. <laughs> so it is in the northern part of, of West Virginia, uh, it's only about an hour and 20 minutes away from Pittsburgh. Yeah. So realistically, if Mahoning Valley, it's a short trip. Um, Aberdeen, it's a short trip, not that far. Um, you know, Auburn, it's going to be a little far, but Auburn's used to that. I mean, playing like Lowell and Mahoning Valley and those, those places. But the, the thing is, this is sad because it is another sign of the New York Penn League that I grew up with in the 70s and the 80s and even the early 90s has dramatically changed and will never go back to what it used to be. And, I, you know, Leo Pinckney, who was a friend of mine, someone I admire very much, was president of the New York Penn League, I, I know that he would not like this because, you know, the New York Penn League was about upstate New York cities, uh, minor league baseball. Uh, you know, it was a very family-oriented or just very, I don't want to say folksy, but it was just it was a small-town league, and it's not like that anymore. It's, it's changed dramatically. Okay, and I know he wouldn't be in favor of Jamestown moving. I mean, Jamestown is one of the charter members of the league. It's their 75th anniversary, and I'm not in favor of it. I, you know, look, they're building a nice new stadium in Morgantown for the West Virginia Mountaineers, you know, the, the college baseball team there, and, and the, Mount, the, the team, wherever they're going to name it, is going to be playing in there too during uh, the summer months. Great, you know, but again, I don't believe the New York Penn League belongs in West Virginia, nor does it belong in Ohio or Maryland. It should be in New York and Pennsylvania. And I give you Massachusetts and Connecticut because they do border. But when you start going to places like Ohio and in New York City, that's another rent I can go on, that New York Penn League has two teams in New York City, which, excuse me, they do have Major League Baseball in the New York Penn League. Why do we need Minor League Baseball in a Major League City? It's another topic we could, I could rant about. But the Penn League has changed. I understand it's big money now and everything. And cities like Auburn are the you know, the old days and things like that, and we can't keep up with these guys for attendance. We can only average around maybe 1,200 people a game, where in Brooklyn they're averaging 7,000 people a game. You know, but for what Auburn's population is, and, um, you know, I think we do pretty well. And I shudder to think if Auburn was the team that was going to be relocated because we weren't drawing enough, because that franchise does well. I, did, I went to three games this season. They were well attended, had a great time. It's a beautiful ballpark, great place to spend a summer night, so... End of rant. Robert, up. Your turn. 
being the Western New Yorker here. I'm I'm fine with it. Uh, Ooh, we disagree. Yeah. Wow. Conflict. I, you know, the reality is this is this is sports. You know, look at even even the top tier professional leagues. You talk about the NFL. You know, as a Bills fan, I know all about this. Yeah. You know, it's small market versus large market, and when you have when you get down to this level, it's even more difficult because you're talking about you know many extremes like. Compare Jamestown for a second to, say, Brooklyn or Staten Island. Right. You know, it's just, it's not fair, but at the same time, when Jamestown is only drawing, uh, I believe I checked the other day, their average attendance this year was around 764. Uh, you know, that you know that kind of signals that it might be time to move on, mm -hmm. unfortunately. All right. But, uh, you know, and, and it takes... Uh, it takes, you know, a lot of different pieces to keep a team alive, to keep a team healthy. Uh, you know, the fan base has got to be there. You know, commitment from, you know, local governments, obviously. You know, we're seeing that with mm -hmm. the professional ranks, of course, the Bills. But, you know, we see it here in, in Auburn. You know, the city and the state invested money to, you know, redo the field uh, there at Falcon Park. So, you know, it's a... Uh, it's sad. It's sad to see uh, another New York team leave. You know, uh, the last time we went through one of these, Oneana moved to Connecticut, I right. believe. So, mm -hmm. you know, another upstate New York team uh, leaves the state, and uh, it's unfortunate. Yeah. You know, I, you know, uh, obviously it's named New York Penn League. I can remember uh, where I grew up. I grew up near Batavia. You know, I went to a few Muck Dogs games. Uh, you know, so it was. Uh, you know, it's it's sad to see that this is you know what it's become, and it's sad to see that you know Jamestown's leaving. You know, Batavia's status is up in the air. You know, they could be another team that we see uh, depart here in the next few years uh, if they can find a home for them, I suppose. But uh, you know, it's it's challenging. It's challenging in sports these days, and you know, it's sad to see such a shift. And you know, my question is, and you know, I'm eager to get your thoughts on this, Chris. Uh, you know, now that I believe there's only going to be eight teams uh, in New York and Pennsylvania in the league now that Jamestown's moving out of 14. You know, do you think they should consider a name change at some point? I, I think that's difficult just because it's so familiar and everything, and and that's a lot of stuff. Because people, when you hear the New York Penn League, if you know minor league baseball, you hear the New York Penn League, you know exactly what you're talking about. So, but what do you change it to? I mean, there's you know. I mean, do you take all the states, you know, the Massachusetts, New York, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Ohio, West Virginia league, you know? I mean, then, uh, you know, I think New, New York Penn League is, has a good ring to it. I think that's one of the reasons why they've kept it. And then, you know, there is 75 years of tradition. Now, I know the league started as the Pony League, the Pennsylvania-Ontario-New York League back in the late 30s. So when they had St. Catharines and... No, no, no. It's it's been the New York Penn League for like at least the last sixty years. I'm saying, but when the league started in 1939 through the early 40s, it was called the Pony League. Okay, you need something either if you can get an acronym that sounds snappy, then maybe you could do it. But uh, I, I don't think so. But you know, like I said, it's 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 just a sad day because you know when I grew up, there were teams in Jamestown, Batavia, Oneana, Elmira, Geneva, Watertown. You know. All, they're all gone except for Auburn and Batavia. Those are the last two, what I call the old guard of the Penn League. You know, Little Falls had a team for a few years in the 80s. Um, they were a Mets farm team. Now, I understand you can't be in teams that small. Newark had a team. I mean, Newark, New York had a team. Wow. Robin Young played there, by the way. Newark. Bet you didn't know that. So it's just sad to see the soul, of the heart of the league change so much. And, again, I understand this is money. These minor league teams are worth millions of dollars. And... You know, there's value, and you, and it's a business, and and that ultimately, that is really what sports is. Even at the minor league level, it is a business, and you've got to make a buck. So, well, I guess you want to wrap it up, Robert, or anything else you want to add about that? No, I'll right. I'll just say that uh, you know I think that this is, uh, you know, this kind of serves as a wake up call to people, you know, here in New York, you know, whether it's Auburn or, you know, Batavia or, or you know anywhere else really that, you know, the health of these teams means something mm -hmm. not only on the business side but you know. If you have a chance, you know, go out to the game, support the team, you know, you know, make sure it remains part of the community. So, you know, we we have fewer Jamestowns and more, you know, more cases, you know, like we see, uh, you know, in some of these other markets where the the New York Penn League teams are thriving. So, you know, hopefully it doesn't happen here. Or, you know, you know, I don't want to see it to happen no. to, to Batavia, but you know, they've had some issues over there. 
but you know, hopefully, uh, you know, this serves as a wake up call and people start supporting uh, these teams a little more. Yeah, if you if you live in Auburn, I mean, there's only a handful, of, not even a handful of games. There's really two or three home games left. Please go out, support the Double Days, and you know, like I said, it's it's your baseball team, and if we lose it, we're not going to get it back. I guarantee you that. There's no way that Auburn will ever get another New York Penn League franchise if this team leaves. So please support it. So. And we'll wrap it up there. We appreciate your support. Please, um, you know, if you like the video, um, you know, share the links with your friends. We appreciate it. And we will see you next week for some NFL chat. Thanks again. Have a good weekend.